uh, and Ampere's law. This is the magnetic field due to a coaxial cable. So imagine that I have a cable and it's got two parts. So there's a center wire and then an outer wire and they have equal and opposite current. So here you have a current coming out of the board. There you have a current going into the board. Let's find the magnetic field everywhere. So let's start with Ampere's law. I'm gonna write it down. It looks like this. So this says that if you integrate the magnetic field around, around some closed path, then the product of that integral would be equal to the total current passing through the surface area bounded by that curve. And so, um, you know, just in, in simple terms, if I have some shape like that and I integrate the magnetic field along that path and like this, that'd be related to the total current passing through that surface. That's what that says. And mu naught is a constant. In order to use the Ampere law here, you already have to know something about the shape of the field. You have to know that. So let's just start with this inner wire. I'm going to draw it right here. It's bigger. And so here I have the current coming out of the page. I'm going to make an assumption about the shape of the field. What I'm going to do is assume that it's uh, circularly, circularly symmetrical, cylindrically symmetrical, such that it makes, if the magnetic field is coming out this way and the current's coming out this way, it's going to make a circular path like that, which is what we have for a, a, a solid wire. Um, I don't like that. Let's draw this bigger. So imagine that I pick some path of radius r and then I have this for my magnetic field. And the, the two important things here is that the direction of that magnetic field is in the same direction as the circular path. So that B dot DL is going to be B times DL. They're in the same direction. So DL is that way. DL is that way. DL, 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 DL. And the magnitude is constant at the same radius. So if I pick two things about the shape of that field in order to set this up. So we're not starting from scratch. If you use Beal and Savar, that would be starting from scratch. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do this. If I do B dot DL along this closed path, let's just write that out. The integral of B dot DL, this is a dot product between two vectors. If they're in the same direction, this is going to be B DL. And I've already said that the magnitude of B is constant, so I can write this as B times the integral of DL. And you'll see what we're doing here. We're not going to use Ampere's law except for situations that are trivially stupid. And in this case, it's trivially stupid because now I just have to integrate DL around a circular path. Well, guess what? That's the circumference of a circle. So it's going to be equal to B times 2 pi R. That's the path integral. Now, I need to do the IN. So here we have to find out how much current passes through this circular loop. And we're going to make the assumption that the current density is constant. So the current per unit uh, area right here is the same as the current per unit area right there. So let's write this as uh, the current, total current, divided by the total area, pi, that has a radius of a, a squared, is equal to i n over the area of this, which is pi r squared. So if I solve this for i n, I get i n equals pi r squared i over pi a squared. So pi's cancel, and now I have that. So now we can put the whole thing together. Um, I am on a board here, so I am going to erase just to make give myself some more room. So I have the path integral is that b 2 pi r equals mu naught i n, which is this, i r squared over, that's mu naught, a squared. And let's solve for the magnitude of b. So I'm going to divide both sides by this. I get b equals mu naught over 2 pi. And then I get one of these r's cancel, so I have r over a squared i. A 
Okay, let's write that down because we're going to call that B1 and then I'm going to find B2 and then I'm going to find B3 and then I'm going to find B4. So I have four regions I got to find the magnetic field. So let's put this over here, B, B1. I hope you can see that. B1 is mu naught over 2 pi A squared I R. Now let's go to region 2 inside of here. That one's actually pretty easy. I'm going to leave that up there. So in region 2, I'm going to again pick a circular path. I'm going to again assume that the magnetic field doesn't change with distance. I'm going to assume that it makes a direction that's in the same direction. So again, I'm going to get B dot DL is B times 2 pi R. Right? It says now I have an R that's greater than A, and that's fine. And here, mu naught i n is just going to be i. So now when I take this path, this path, this area bounded by a path, it doesn't matter how big my radius is, I'm going to still have the total current coming through there of i. So I don't have to, to find the ratio of the current. Now I can solve for b. I get b equals mu naught over 2 pi r times i. That's the magnetic field due to a long straight wire, and that's what you get. So let's put that over here, B2, mu naught over 2 pi r i. Now, one of the things that we didn't check, number one, do the units work? Do these two fields have the same units? Well, here I have mu naught i r over a squared. Here I have mu naught i over r. You notice I have meters, meters squared, so they do have the same units. Number two, what if R equals A? Which one do you use? Right on the border. Well, if I put in A right here, I get mu naught I over 2 pi A. If I put A here, I get the same thing. So they agree. That's good. Okay, now for the hardest one inside of here, region three. Let's do it. Um, this is still the same. We're still going to assume the magnetic field only depends on distance from the center and that it's pointing in the same direction as the path. And then we just have to get this as I in. And again, we can find the current density and use that to find uh, the thing. But here we have a problem, right? Because if I have this B and this is R and this is C. So let's first find uh, the total current divided by the total area. So that's I divided by this total area. Well, that's going to be equal to uh, pi C squared minus pi B squared. Right? It's the area of the whole circle minus the area of the whole. Yeah, I said whole minus whole. But one of them had a WH, the whole. And the area right here is going to be equal to I n divided by that area, which is going to be pi r squared minus pi b squared. And I want to solve for I n. Well, first of all, all the pi's cancel. That's good. So I get I n is going to be equal to, I have another I. So this is actually going into the board. I'm going to call that negative, And I'm going to call this one out of the board. So it's I, right? Because I have to include the center wire too, minus uh, this. So I'm going to multiply by that. And I get, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to multiply by this. So let's just write this as I times 1. And then I'm going to multiply by this. The pi's cancel. And I get minus r squared minus b squared over c squared minus b squared. And that's not the best form, but I think it's fine, right? And it does have the right units, 1, and that has a unitless quantity right there. And if I put that in over here, I get b uh, 2 pi r equals mu naught i 1 minus r squared minus b squared over c squared minus b squared. And that goes over here for b3. 
Why am I rewriting this? I don't know. One minus r squared minus b squared over c squared minus b squared. Okay. And let's just check. What if r is equal to b? If r is equal to b, then I should have this and this degree. So if I put in b right there for r, I get zero. Oh wait, I left I left off this stuff. Two pi r. See, this is why you check your work, right? So you can find errors like that. If I put in uh, r is equal to b, this is zero on the top, so I get just one, and then I put b right there, I get the same thing, so that's winning. Now for the finally, the easiest one over here in region four. Um, again, I'm gonna assume that b is constant with r and in the direction of the path. And in that case, the key thing here is what's i in? Well, it doesn't matter what my path is, but i in is gonna include both the current coming out and the current coming in, and so i in is zero. So b is zero. So that's my fourth region. And there you go. And that's why we use a coaxial cable, because a coaxial cable creates no magnetic field on the outside. So it's, it doesn't interfere with other cables, and that's a good thing. The end. <laughs>